20 years ago, the Watergate scandal rocked the nation. But tonight, we can reveal that the target was not known to the investigative committees, nor even to G. Gordon Liddy, who ran the break-in team. Indeed, Larry O'Brien's office was never bugged. Buried in the National Archives until now is evidence that could unlock the mystery. It is this key. One of the burglars risked his life to conceal it. Was it the key to the real target of the break-in? Was it the key to a call girl ring with sinister underworld connections? What was the real role of John Dean, the counsel to President Nixon, who turned state's evidence in return for a minimal sentence? Always remember, others may hate you. But those who hate you don't win unless you hate them. And then you destroy yourself. Thank you very much. A prophetic comment in an emotional goodbye to his staff from Richard Nixon, a president ruined by a scandal that need never to have touched him. By the time he left the White House in disgrace, the suffix gate had already been added to the English language to signify a major political scandal. There's the president waving goodbye to you hear the applause. When five burglars were caught at the Watergate building in Washington 20 years ago, they unleashed the most destructive political scandal in the history of the United States. The building was the headquarters of the Democratic National Committee, and the burglars were in the pay of their Republican opponents, specifically the campaign to re-elect the president. Twelve men went to jail for the burglary and the cover-up. They included Nixon's two chief White House aides, H.R. Haldeman and John Ehrlichman and former Attorney General John Mitchell. Nixon avoided jail, but he lost the presidency. I hereby resign the office of President of the United States, was his one-sentence abdication. Watergate is seared in American political history, but many fundamental beliefs surrounding it are quite simply wrong. Even those directly involved in investigating the scandal still don't know answers to crucial questions. I must tell you that, that I remain disturbed by what we don't know about the Watergate break-in, and I am convinced that what we don't know about the Watergate break-in uh, may well be more important than what we do know about it 20 years after. Twenty years ago, the Nixon administration was under siege. The White House was fighting wars on two fronts, in Vietnam and in the streets. This was a White House where legal counsel John Dean could prepare an official enemies list suggesting that they use federal machinery to screw our political enemies and have the chief of the White House staff approve it. The burglars were led by G. Gordon Liddy, an ex-FBI agent. He loyally went to jail for his political masters, admitting nothing. Now he has a story to tell, and what a story. Uh, it was to get sexual dirt, if you will, on the Democrats. And from what we have now learned, there was plenty there to be had. We'll hear more about the allegation that Watergate was motivated by a desire to get sexual dirt on the Democrats later on in the program. The five burglars Liddy commanded were all ex-CIA operatives. Four were Cubans, who all fought in the abortive Bay of Pigs operation against Fidel Castro. Frank Sturgis, the leader of the Cubans, remembers how he was recruited for the Watergate break-in. Uh, evidently, the president felt that there were so much leaks in the FBI, there were so much leaks in the National Security Agency, there were so many leaks that were coming out of the White House itself, plus the uh, leaks that were coming out of CIA, and he wanted to plug up these leaks. He wanted to find out who was leaking uh, confidential information to the press. That was our job. And uh, that uh, the Special Intelligence Unit had more power than a lot of these uh, agencies had. 
And this is where the news media came up with the idea calling us the plumbers to plug up the leaks. For all their CIA connections, the plumbers were incompetent burglars. Three members of the Washington police undercover or so-called bum squad responded to a robbery in progress. They found the burglars and piles of photographic equipment, film, all sorts of electronic gear and hordes of cash. But later, the police found something that was much more interesting. In fact, it was political dynamite. The address book of one of the burglars, Bernard Barker, included the listing HH for Howard Hunt and the initials WH, White House. It was the first indication that the White House was behind the break-in. From the phone at the second precinct, one of the detectives made an anonymous call tipping off the Washington Post. Watergate had begun. I began by telling the president that there was a cancer growing on the presidency, and that if the cancer was not removed, the president himself would be killed by it. John Dean is remembered as the young man who mesmerized a nation by his seeming encyclopedic memory, which so damaged the Nixon presidency. Day after day, the nation stood glued to the television as he spoke, watched by his beautiful blonde wife, Mo. Dean was the chief witness before the Senate committee, an insider who turned state's evidence in return for a minimal sentence. The president was well aware of what had been going on regarding the success of keeping the White House out of the Watergate scandal, and I had also expressed to him my concern that I was not confident that the cover-up could be maintained indefinitely. John Dean, more than anyone, revealed the massive White House cover-up, a cover-up in which he had played an active role. Dean told how he had discussed payments to the Watergate burglars with President Nixon. I told him I didn't know much about it, other than the fact that the money was laundered, so it could not be traced, and then there were secret deliveries. But some government officials now think that Dean knew a whole lot more than he let on. They believe his role in the cover-up was so pervasive it fatally flawed their own investigation, so they never found out what really happened. The FBI set up a special team to investigate Watergate, but almost everywhere they went, John Dean had been there before. Angelo Leno was the FBI special agent in the Washington field office responsible for the Watergate investigation. Leno is now retired, but he still acts as an FBI consultant. We had no idea that John Dean was getting the information. Uh, and what John Dean was doing with the information was circumventing, circumventing our investigation. Every avenue that we tried, uh, John was either there or, or was about to approach somebody, debrief them, and I don't know exactly what he said to them, whether he told them, don't say this and don't say that, much to the disgust of Angelo Leno, Dean was intimately involved. Leno later learned that Dean was working closely with the acting director of the FBI, Pat Gray, to cover up the White House involvement.